Hello and welcome to part 3 of module 6 in our Django series. In today's session, we are going to work on the teacher detail template. Before we get to the template, let's create the view. So come to your command prompt. Change directory to the virtual environment. Activate the environment. Start VS Code. And we need to be in the views.py file. The name of the view is going to be teacher detail. It's going to take the HTTP request object and teacher ID. And we're going to use a variable here into which we're going to get the requested teacher details. So teacher.objects.get pk for primary key equal to teacher ID. This particular parameter is going to come through the root argument in our urls.py file. So we'll put that in later. Return render request and the name of the template. We've got to send in context as well. So we'll put that in here. The key will be teacher. The value will come from the variable teacher. So we'll just put that in here. And that's it. Now we need to wire in this view. So come to your app urls.py file. Make sure there's a comma after the last path. Put in the path now and that's going to be teacher forward slash. And now we'll put in the argument teacher ID, which is a character field. Close angle brackets forward slash comma views dot teacher detail and the name argument equal to teacher detail. Now that we've wired in the view, we can go ahead and create the template. So in the templates folder, right click, click on new file and put in the name teacher detail dot HTML. We start with the extends tag. And that's going to be the app name forward slash the base template name or the parent template. So that's base.html. We then load the style. So load static. We have our block tag now. That's going to be block content. And an end block tag. That's going to be end block content. And here we'll have an h1 tag that's going to be a variable teacher id so teacher dot teacher id remember teacher is coming through the context in the view we then have a div class for styling and within the div we have an h2 tag again a variable that's going to be teacher name so teacher dot teacher name and another h2 tag that's going to be just a heading. We then have an hr tag to give us a horizontal line and then we have an h3 tag and another field or another variable you can see that's going to be teacher dot teacher background. And that's it for the template. Now that we've done the template as well as wire in the view, we can go ahead and run the server. So change directory to your container folder and by manage.py run server to start the server. Go to the browser, navigate to the home page. And for now, we can't really click on the teacher's names to get their details. We'll do that later, but we can test our code here. So put in the path and that's teacher forward slash and one of the IDs that exists in the database. And you see the teacher detail. Right. 
Now a couple of exercises. Modify the teacher detail view so as to raise a 404 error if the teacher whose details have been requested does not exist. So let's go back to the views.py file and modify the code. So here we'll have try and then accept teacher dot does not exist then raise http 404 sending in a message the rest remains the same so go back to the browser now put in a code or an id rather that does not exist And there you get the message that we just put into our view. Another exercise. Use the get object of 404 method to accomplish the same task. So go back to the views.py file. We can delete all this code. And then have teacher equal to get object of 404. Model name is teacher. PK for primary key equal to teacher ID. And that's all. So you see how much shorter the code is when we use get object of 404. Of course, the message displayed is going to be different. So let's go try that out now. Put in another ID that does not exist. And there you have it. Let's go back to the home page. And let's work on modifying our code so that when we click on the teacher names, we get their details. For that, we need to come to our team.html. And currently, we just have tr.teacher name. And that's what you see appearing on screen. What we do now is here, we'll put in an anchor tag. The URL will be forward slash the app name forward slash teacher forward slash and of course we've got to send in the teacher id so tr dot teacher id forward slash we need to close this tag now bring this ending anchor tag just cut that off with control x and place it here Let's go and try this out now. So go to the browser, refresh the page. And now if you click on the teacher name, you can see the details of that teacher. Right? But there is a problem in our code. As you can see, this URL is partially hard coded into the template. And that's not a recommended way to go about it. Why? The issue is that if we have many templates in our project, we will have to manually then change the URL in every template that uses it. What I mean is, if for example, in our urls.py file, we change this to teacher underscore DET, then in every template that uses this path, including our team, We'll have to change this as well right and that's going to be inconvenient and going to take a lot of time particularly if as i mentioned earlier there are many templates in the project what's the resolution then the resolution is to use the name argument that we have been defining in our url configuration along with the url template tag so how do we do that Come back to the same template. You can now delete this URL. And instead put in our curly braces and percentage signs. Then the URL template tag. The name argument. And then tr.teacherid. Of course I need to go back and change this to the original path 
Now let's try that out. I go back to the home page. Click on our team. Click on a name and you get the details of the teacher. Right, now there's something else we need to talk about and that's namespacing URL names. As you will agree, a project may have more than one app. What if two apps in the same project have the same view name? So if, for example, we have our app, currently school app, using teacher detail, the name. And let's say we have another app, let's say a blog app, also having a view name, teacher detail. Which app view then will Django create when using the URL template tag? And to avoid this confusion, we add a namespace to the URL configuration. So let's go now to our URLs.py file and just put in the app name there. App name equal to, and that's going to be school app. That's the first step. The second step is in the template, we qualify this particular view name. We put in the app name there, colon, and that's it. So now there is no confusion as to which app this view name relates to. Let's go and try that out now. Go back to the home page. Click on our team. Click on the teacher name. And there you have it. Now let's add a background image to our site so that we don't see this white background. And the image that you can use, you will find at a link in the description of this video. So the link will take you to a folder. And this is the image we need. Copy that image into our static folder that we created in the last session. So C drive, users folder, username, virtual environment, project, app, static, app again, images, and control V to paste. And then in your style.css file, scroll down to the bottom. And you can just change this number from 348 to 350. Right, now go back to the browser. Refresh the page. And you should see the image. Now, if you don't see the image for some reason, then what you need to do is go to your settings and clear browser data. Okay, so click on your privacy option there and then clear all browsing data and then of course you should see the image okay let's add an image field so that the teacher photograph appears here to do that first of all we need to stop the server and install pillow now, if we don't install Pillow, then we're going to have runtime errors, right? So, I'm going to just clear the screen and type in pi hyphen m pip install Pillow. This will install the Pillow library, which is needed when we're using the image field. So, now you can run the server again. And now, let's understand the steps involved before we start writing the code. So first of all, we need to modify the teacher model. We'll have to add the image field. We'll also have to make changes in the teacher detail template to include the image. We'll have to update teacher objects so that their photographs are uploaded. And then make changes in the settings.py file. What those changes are, I'll come to shortly. For now, let's start with the teacher model. So let's go to our models.py file and here we'll have teacher underscore pig 
equal to models dot image field. Now the image field is a var car column, and var car, as you may know, is a variable length string type field. The reason that it's a var car column or a field is because Django does not store physical images in the database for performance reasons. Rather, a path to the image is stored in the database. The default length or the default max length, I should say, is 100. You can, of course, change that. It's an optional argument, so we are not going to include it. What we need to include, though, is the default image. So here, we just put in default equal to, and that's going to be static forward slash app name forward slash images forward slash teacher dot jpg comma and then we've got to specify the upload to argument which indicates where these images will be uploaded to so that's a path again static forward slash teacher photos now, of course, we'll have to run make migrations and migrate. But before that, let's modify the template. So let's now go to teacher detail.html. Just after the name, we'll put in the image tag, class for styling, and the source. So this will be a variable teacher dot teacher pick the field name dot url so that will essentially give us the path to the image and then load the image we've got to put in alt text so alt equal to and close the image tag and that's all for the modification in the template now in the settings.py file here static files underscore directories base directory so that's the project directory forward slash static there's going to be a directory that is created which is the directory that's the upload to directory right that we just specified in our models.py file we said static forward slash teacher photos so that's going to be created within our project directory. And so Django then is going to look at this setting and go to the project forward slash static and then pick up the images from there. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Now the styles that we specified in teacher detail, that's teacher IMG, and some other styles required for the session you will again find at the same link in the description of this video, right? So, these are the styles. So, what you can do is just copy all of these except for the about style. All the rest, you can just copy into your style.css file at the bottom there. Also, the teacher images have to be copied into the static folder. So, going back to that same folder, all these images just copy them into our static folder. I'm sure you know how to do that now. Users, username. And then virtual environment project app static app images control v to paste right now of course we need to run make migrations and migrate so come to your command prompt pi manage dot pi make migrations and migrate right now the next thing we need to do is upload the images right 
that is modifying the teacher objects. So for that we need to run the server and then access the admin site. So localhost forward slash admin. And this is going to be come straight to teachers and for each teacher we will upload their photograph so choose a file note the default image there choose the image i'm going to use the same one save next teacher Choose the image, save, next teacher, choose their image and save and the next one, choose their image and save. And the next teacher choose their photograph and save. And the last teacher choose their image and save. Right? Now that the teacher's images are saved, we can just log out. And go to the home page. Click on our team, teacher, and there you see the teacher image. Right? Now, where is this image coming from? If you go back to your code, in models.py, remember we had specified through the upload to argument, static forward slash teacher photos as a directory where the photographs would be uploaded. And the uploading of the photographs, remember, was done when we modified or updated the teacher objects in the admin site right now if you scroll down in vs code explorer you can see we have a static folder there and that's not of course the static folder within the app directory it's actually created within the project directory right so if i kind of collapse this and the app as well then you can see this is created within the project folder and within that we have teacher photos and all the teacher images right the last thing we need to do in the session is the about link which maybe you've already done but if you've not then we can do that now so for that come to base.html first we need to put in the url so here href equal to forward slash app name forward slash about forward slash now we've already wired in this view right so in the urls.py you already see it there if you don't have it then just add it in now we can proceed to create the template so in your templates folder right click new file about.html extends tag and that's going to be the app name forward slash the name of the parent or the base template load static to load the styles block tag and end block tag and within this We'll have an h1 tag class for styling. Remember, we saved the styles already. Here we just say about our school. We have a paragraph tag class for styling. And then just a paragraph on the school. You can put in whatever you like. The view we've already done, if you recall. So we already have the about view there. So now let's go to the browser, refresh the page, and there you have about. Now you see that appears in blue, 
we want it to appear in black for consistency in our navigation bar. Now in the same text file from where you got these styles, at the top you'll see the styling for about. You can choose to either select all of it, copy and then replace the current styling for about in your style.css file. So come to style.css, edit and find. We look for about. So you can either replace all of this. Alternatively, you can just put in color black there. Now go back to the browser, refresh the page, and there you have it in black. Click on the link, and there's our template. Right? That ends our session for today. In the next session, we'll talk about Django Forms. Till then, take care. Bye.